Hello, I'm joined today by Chris Adamkowski. He's the Head of Industry Financial Services at Google. Uh, nice to be speaking to you today, Chris. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Thanks for having me this morning, Tom. So in these challenging times, uh, what do you see as the biggest risk and the biggest opportunity? Mm -hmm. um, well, based on, uh, based on what I do for a living, this probably won't surprise you. My answer probably won't surprise you. Uh, and the answer to both is, is digital, in my opinion, and in my experience. So the reason why I say that uh, digital is the biggest opportunity is because uh, right now you've got uh, a state where there's a lot of people who are feeling a little bit, a little bit nervous about uh, the reality of the world, the, you know, the COVID epidemic and, uh, and uh, the resulting drop off in the economy. And what I've seen in my experience uh, very recently is, you know, I've heard it an anecdotally said, four years of digital advancement in the last four months while we've been, while we've been home and resources being redeployed towards uh, building digital infrastructure, making systems run better. Um, and, uh, and I think this is good. I think this is what people should be doing uh, right now. Uh, I think that um, you know, human nature can get in the way of digital a little bit uh, because digital does mean for a lot of a lot of firms that aren't digital natives, uh, it does mean different. It means change. It means risk. Uh, it means going away from something that you know has been tried and true and working for you for maybe you know maybe decades, uh, maybe longer, um, and trying something that uh, that isn't as proven, at least in the context of of your individual firm. So. Uh, you know, human nature is, is about survival. It's about not sticking your neck out. It's about taking very calculated risk, minimizing risk. And digital might seem uh, a little bit uh, bigger than that, especially just, you know, beyond the toe dip that a lot of firms are generally just at right now. And uh, so I recognize by telling you this, I'm asking you to go against human nature by taking a, maybe a bigger step than what you uh, would be ne might necessarily be comfortable with. Uh, but now's the time. And that's, that's the opportunity side. Uh, now's the time, I think, to invest in uh, a lot of these, you know, tools and infrastructure and, uh, and transformation, frankly, because, you know, right now, I think expectations are a little bit lower for firms. I think we could safely say that some of the targets haven't gone away, but may have been softened in the current context. And you might have, uh, you might be in a position where you've got some resources that um, are underutilized. Uh, compared to what they may have been before this pandemic. And to get the most out of those resources in a short period of time, hopefully a short period of time, I uh, could be deploying those with a similar skill set required towards some digital projects that have been sitting on the shelf that you know you should probably get to, but you just haven't yet. From a risk perspective, it's that you know everyone else, not everyone else, but a lot of the other uh, companies that that I work with uh, are moving towards this right now with uh, with speed and uh, and intention, and increasingly a a great digital experience is the expectation uh, by your clients. Um, embracing digital, we all need to do it, as you said. Although it's not always easy, can you break down for us in a few sentences how to go about digitally transforming? So, so digital digital transformation is is quite a quite a broad um, catch-all basket for activity uh, I think you know when I think about that generally digital transformation is moving um, moving antiquated not well antiquated might be a strong word but moving your you know more traditional business um, to a digital context but not just transforming it over in business as usual but now using digital tools um, in, in my opinion it is moving that uh moving those um deliverables over but then rethinking how you're going to go about executing it and how that will look for clients and how you'll be able to deliver it on your side through a digital lens where you know a lot more is possible so let me illustrate um a, an example of digital transformation to you through my core expertise which is you know digital but also with a, a pretty heavy marketing slant so when uh, when looking at digital marketing and then thinking pretty narrowly about the customer acquisition funnel, so new customer acquisition, there's a component of 
you know, upper funnel, upper funnel marketing awareness uh, that can be that, that can and should be digitized. And what that looks like, you know, different from the way that it might have historically been done is now the expectation is to really get to know your audience and not just assume, oh, I might be after, you know, uh, wealthy clients, wealthy clients like golf. So golf sponsorship, like that's that would be a um, I'm not and I'm not necessarily saying that that's wrong uh, in terms of an outcome, but in terms of a process doing that digitally means doing a really deep evaluation of what your customers actually look like, finding some common threads that might not be obvious within that audience, and then uh, sussing out how you can bring that to life with um, uh, with a, a, a narrative uh, and a message and a positioning that will resonate with your clients uh, on a much deeper level, perhaps, than anything that you've done previously. So the expectation of that upper funnel is doing your due diligence that way, and then when it comes to execution, uh, getting you know really tailored about making sure that you know sometimes you might have a few different messages for a few custom audiences, and making sure that those audiences see the message that really is customized to them and not waste a dollar elsewhere. So you know, another way of thinking about this is you know the old saying that you know I know 50% of my advertising dollars are working, in, um, or half of my advertising dollars are working. I just don't know which half. Well, the expectation is that you do. Um, and that brings me to the second part. So that was the upper funnel, <clears throat> narrow messages, narrow targeting, very precise. And then you have to measure it. So measurement uh, to me in a, in a digital uh, capacity you know, doesn't mean just looking at the end report card and then saying, oh, looks like about half of it worked. Uh, it means building an attribution model uh, to see how every single dollar performed and where every client came from uh, through that upper part of the funnel. And then connecting that to the lower funnel. And the lower funnel, um, I would say that's the, the third of four parts that I'll talk about in this just narrow segment. Uh, the lower funnel is precision, um, understanding of what a great client looks like and making sure you're uh, at the bottom of the funnel through acquisition, paying the right amount for those accounts or for those, uh, for, for that new business. And again, doing that in a really, you know, in a digital way that is very specific uh, and data driven. Finally, you, you've talked about the need for businesses to be um, helpful and efficient during COVID-19. What else do you think is important? Can you give attendees a snapshot of what you'll be speaking about um, later in the year in October um, at the Empower platform? First of all, Tom, thank you for reading my white papers. Uh, <laughs> that's something that I that I have spoken about. Um, I don't think I would frame the question as uh, helpful and efficient. What else? Um, I think it would. I would frame it, uh, or I'd like to answer it as helpful and efficient. How else? Because I don't think that. Um, there's necessarily a whole bunch of other ways to think about it that can add incremental value as much as, you know, looking at these two elements and really going deep on them, especially in the current context. Uh, from an efficiency perspective, um, I mentioned this in, in an earlier question, but this is, uh, this is a great opportunity right now to really get under the hood on how, uh, uh, how your business runs uh, digitally. So this could take a whole bunch of different uh, perspectives, again, to just narrow it down to one where I have um, some particular expertise. Uh, I've encouraged a lot of my clients over the last four months to take a really good look at their, um, their performance acquisition, uh, new customer acquisition. And what we found are lots of cases where a certain budget was bringing in a great customer, so nobody was thinking twice about it. But uh, after a good look under the hood, what we found is that that same budget could actually deliver two great customers. And we're finding um, opportunities to just, you know, get into the weeds, turn the dials a little more than we would in like the fast and free growth times, uh, just to make sure that you know, what, we're, what we're executing on now gives us the full value possible. We're getting the most out of every, uh, every dollar. Um, we do have a, a saying in Canada that I think we just throw out uh, that I remember from even as a, as a kid and it was, um, you know, you don't want to be the slowest camper and everyone just nods and knows what that means. But for your, your audience, what, what that really means is that um, if, uh, 
if a bear uh, were to show up on a campsite, and I haven't seen this in person, fortunately, uh, but if a bear were to show up in the campsite, the first thing you do is not run away. It's tie your shoes. Uh, and the reason why is that uh, you're not going to outrun the bear, but you don't have to. You only have to outrun the slowest camper. Uh, so the reason why I say that, especially from an efficiency perspective, is that um, I, I would look for the slowest camper, and, and that's the one you cut in a, in a downturn, and you force all of the other campers or all of the other tactics that you're doing uh, to run faster. And you do that by, uh, by getting into the weeds and paying a little more attention than you otherwise would. So that's one, going really deep on the efficiency part. And then the second one uh, is, is a pivot to helpful. This is a lot more expansive in thinking. The other one's a little bit more reductive. This one's much more expansive. Uh, from a helpful perspective, I think there's lots of examples of, of, uh, of clients that, I've, that, I, that I work with who are good at this now. Um, this could be... Um, helpful because you're better explaining the products that you have to clients or you are um, making it easier through you know, processes, uh, adjustments and processes for them to get done what they need to do, but maybe in a remote location. Um, and these are good things. But the way that I think about this is that the firm that is most advanced at this today in two years will look like a dinosaur. And that's really why I say, you know, how else? How else can we continue to get better on the helpfulness front? Because customers will demand it because digital can deliver it and you won't be compared to the other financial institution. Well, Chris, thank you so much for a fascinating discussion today. I really look forward to um, furthering the dialogue later in the year in power. Um, but have a wonderful day and just thank you so much for speaking to us today. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time this morning and I look forward to seeing you in October.